Welcome to Atlantic Rhapsody. My name is Allison Callender and I am the Curator of Art in our History and Barbers Museum. We take this opportunity to welcome you both virtually and physically to the opening of the Robert McLeod exhibition. We thank you so much for joining us and we hope that you enjoy what we have to offer. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Alessandra Cummins, Director of the Barbados Museum and Historical Society and it's my special pleasure to welcome you to this first exhibition for the year, the work of Robert J. McLeod, Atlantic Rhapsody, Elegy to the Islands. And we are particularly proud to take this moment to celebrate what is effectively the 70th anniversary of McLeod's first solo exhibition at the museum in January and February of 1951. That moment was part of a bigger context of where the museum shifted focus from a purely historical and natural historical entity and entered the realm of modern and contemporary art. And McLeod was very eager to be part of that. So we see him actively engaging at the museum over, for over almost three decades with his shows. And so this is a representation of the kind of output that, that man had in response to what he calls his Barbadian home. When we call McLeod a pioneer artist in the context of Barbados, it's actually something that's quite distinct. Many would say that a pioneer artist would have to have been born in that country. But McLeod claimed his Barbadian heritage through his mother at a very early age and never let go of it. As soon as he completed his artistic training uh, and developed a successful career as a commercial artist in New York, by 1936, McLeod was heading back to Barbados, where he lived for the rest of his life. So this exhibition demonstrates the, the vast um, array of different settings uh, where McLeod paid attention to his natural and cultural environment to the cultural traditions that surrounded him. And he was particularly concerned about preserving traditional heritage where he had been seeing it received in the United States. So he particularly valued that. But I wanted to take this moment to look at the work and to thank various individuals who felt it was important that we celebrate this moment in this way because without that vision and without this opportunity to bring over 45 works together in one space you don't really see the relationships between the pieces until they're right next to each other so we are particularly pleased to be able to use this opportunity and I want to thank those of you who supported this from um, the, the collectors who loan their works, uh, John and Rain Chamber, and Anthony and Gloria Eduardo in particular, the Barbados Gallery of Art, and um, Jeremy, Elwan, Jeremy and Mervyn Awan, all of whom loan pieces alongside Thomas and Kathleen Lawfield. Bruce, Robert, and Philip Goddard all were very generous, not just in terms of loaning work, but also in terms of sharing memories and information which told us a lot more about the human being of Robert McLeod and not just the artist. So thank you very much, and I hope you take the opportunity to see this exhibition when it becomes available again. You will have that opportunity, and we look forward to seeing you at that time. Madam Director, collectors and donors, museum staff, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very grateful to the Barbados Museum and Historical Society, and in particular its director, Ms. Alessandra Cummins, and its very experienced and skilled curator, Ms. Alison Callender, for having invited me here to speak at the opening of this very important exhibition on the life and work of the very renowned Barbadian American artist, Robert James McLeod. May I say grateful 
but also delighted because I am unable to speak with the knowledge or authority of those respectfully referenced uh, professionals. However, I am delighted to cast a few words in the stratosphere, not in my role as president of the society, but as one uh, whose life and sensibility is continually impacted by the, uh, the art of Robert McLeod. Allow me to state that I only became acquainted with the work of McLeod after I had returned to Barbados circa 1977, and that was about six years after his passing. And I had just returned from my sojourn of studies and apprenticeships overseas in North America and Europe. My first acquaintance would have been the not so casual recognition in a collector's home, Sir Fred and Lady Flo Goddard, Merriwing in, in Graham Hall Terrace. And that would have been one of those private afternoon teas to which this lovely family invited uh, Sharon and myself as one of their neighbors of the very intimate Graham Hall Terrace community. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the juxtaposition of times of events with the influence of ideas and life forces may sometimes seem obvious or in the contrary of no relevance. As this remarkable McLeod exhibition clearly manifests, this assertion is clearly axiomatic. For the extraordinary skilled scholars, Alessandro Cummins and Taylor Manning have woven a booklet of periods, themes, places, and interpretations, which is absolutely brilliant in intellectual conceptualization and rigor. Alison Chandler, as curator, has skillfully matched space with context and appeal in a very profound manner. But I return temporarily to my journey with uh, Jim McLeod because when this museum chose to use the Cotton Tower Signal Station, uh, uh, it, and this is part of the museum's own collection, and it was chosen as part of the card collection, I was fascinated both by the soft yet strong beauty in that card, and also by the social, military, economic, and political value, a combination of rare variety. McLeod clearly recognized these features in the signal station because he repeated the theme in a less textured, uh, but I should say a, a less textured and ornate fashion, but with the confident Barbadian woman strutting up the hill. And it is to Gloria and Anthony Eduardo that we must give thanks for the loan of that uh, corresponding masterpiece. And indeed, for the many, many pieces which they have loaned uh, for this uh, marvelous exhibition. Thank you very, very, very much, uh, Gloria and Anthony, your, your shining stars. During the, during the decade of the 90s, McLeod and the museum's cotton tower became the backdrop of many invitations and menus, which Sharon and I used to introduce international business persons to a vantage point of Barbados, which might otherwise have been missed. The signal station had been imbued in my own consciousness at another, le consciousness at another level, as not only Cotton Tower, but all of the other signal stations had by that time become a staple uh, walking site on the Sunday morning hikes. And these hikes were conceptualized and started by our own museum star stalwart, Mr. Richard Goddard, in 1983 with the active involvement of Mr. David Clark, now Major David, and Mrs. Sue Rogers, and yours truly. The Sunday morning signal station reflection was transferred to appreciating and sharing it in its very wide manifestations. Allow me to temporarily leave the assertion of the juxtaposition of events, ideas, and life forces, and ask the broader question, which this exhibition clearly answers but to which in a naive sense, I shall also attempt to respond. In my untutored view, I see him as a deeply spiritual man. And I use the term spirituality in a very elastic sense. I also see McLeod as a successful person, not in a pecuniary sense, but in the wide and wonderful construct of Deepak Chopra's seven spiritual laws of success. For when I was first introduced to Chopra in the 1990s, it was a time that I was in the heights and throes of McLeod. Chopra's first law tells us that the source of all creation is pure consciousness. Pure 
potentiality seeking expansion from the unmanifest to the manifest. And when we realize that our true self is one of pure potentiality, we align with the power that manifests everything in the universe. McLeod did not have natural avenues of advancement. He created his own opportunities and choosing. And he chose not to have any formal association with the art galleries or the agents of the time. Instead, he chose the route of getting himself accepted in the New York community. And when he recognized his pure potentiality, he enrolled at Parsons School of Design with its ethos of fairness in training and advancement through democracy. Chopra also recognized in, in this second law that the universe operates through dynamic exchange of giving and receiving. And in his early days, McLeod naturally practiced this trait, making many friends in Barbados, the Goddards and the Crinders, the Connell brothers, Neville and Harrow. He volunteered his service here at the museum, not expecting any financial return, but benefiting for himself and for so many more of us from that museum curatorial experience and period. The work at the museum itself grounded one of his artistic genres, but also made the museum more relevant and visible. It was a pure exemplification of Chopra's second law of giving. Indeed, Chopra's third law of karma, cause and effect, has equal relevance and applicability. For as he reminds us, when we bring happiness and success to others, the fruit of our own karma is happiness and success. James McLeod brought fulfillment to many of us as one of the most collected Caribbean artists and whose seas and people, skies and buildings all had both meaning in different contexts as well as context and color. He enjoyed and gave enjoyment. He satisfied and gave satisfaction. As regards Chopra's fourth law, it is one of least effort since for the true nature's intelligence uh, for, from uh, functions with effortless ease, with carefulness, luxury, and love, which when combined provides success and good fortune with effortless ease. From all accounts, a naturally harmonious man, McLeod spiritually benefited in life without much real apparent effort. It is, however, possibly Chopra's law of intention and desire, which has a special and contextually relevant application to James McLeod, the Barbadian artist. Simply stated, inherent in every intention and desire is the mechanics of its fulfillment. Intention and desire in the field of pure potentiality have infinite organizing power. In this regard, McLeod's taking of his art to the homes of those who could afford and appreciate was a pure exemplar of intention introduced to fertile ground. It bore fruit and it started to produce and to populate the homes and the hotels, the collectors and the cognoscenti. It was a new development in Barbados and overall it started an art market of Barbadian art in Barbados, intention and desire fulfilled. But Chopra also reminds us that in our willingness to step into the unknown, the field of all possibilities, we surrender ourselves to the creative mind, that mind that orchestrates the dance of the universe. McLeod surely did so surrender, and he has orchestrated a dance to which many collectors have moved and swayed, and one which has generated a legion of faithful followers. Now, while Chopra is of the view that everyone has a purpose in life, a unique gift or special talent to give to others, I take the view that McLeod's special gift to so many Caribbean was, was one to so many Caribbean artists who have been influenced by his work, whether by their own admission or indeed by the type of work which they have produced. But here I must pause because in such a sweeping assertion, I am stepping into the province of the art historian, and I have not been given or even earned the key.
key to that door. What I can say, however, and I say it in conclusion, McLeod dominated and documented imported segments of life in Barbados, St. Lucia and Dominica to name the ones that I'm familiar with. I can further say that he was clearly ahead of his time in recognizing the importance of conservation and preservation. And furthermore, he showcased a West Indian spirit and substance with his own common and sometimes different and different hues. I continue to gain vision and perspective and inspiration from his work, as do so many of us who are present at this exhibition today and those who are viewing by way of this modern Zoom recording apparatus. And in closing, let me not forget to once again say how grateful and how eternally thankful we are to Miss Alessandra Cummins and her team at the museum and elsewhere for putting together what can only be called a magnificent tour de force. Thank you very much. And I'm here with one of our prime donors, Anthony Eduardo. Now, Anthony, tell us, you have donated over 20 works of art for this collection. Very simply, I love McLeod's work. Uh, the first time I saw one, it was something that I just felt attracted to, particularly the Barbadian scenes. And knowing that he was a Barbadian painter from quite a long time ago, I felt a lot of this art should be collected and I bought a lot of them overseas and I thought it was important to bring them back to Barbados because a lot of this is part of Barbados' heritage, right? It's, it belongs in Barbados and in terms of the giving them, loaning them for the exhibition, I thought it was important that all Barbadians get an opportunity to see the quality of work that has been done in Barbados. How long have you been collecting his work? About 10 years. Okay. Do you have any favorite works of art within the collection? Uh, the favorite is probably the Pitons. Not a Barbadian one, but it's one that I, I particularly like. You have one in this collection from Barbados that you particularly like? Probably this one here. I'm assuming it is Barbados. I don't know where it is, but it's one of my favorite. Anthony, I want to thank you so much and we really appreciate the fact you've actually been able to part from your work for over three months and share it with Barbados Public. It is my pleasure and I think it is something that I needed to do. Tell me, what possessed you to collect? So many of Robert Well, first of all, I am more or less inherited. Uh, they hung at the Ocean View Hotel, where, where I joined when I was 19 years old. I eventually became manager of the And uh, I always loved them. And I was fascinated that they actually survived without glass over the oils of that sea glass for so many years. Um, and of course, when I left the Ocean View, I took them with me. Part of me and part of the ocean. Do you have any favorite works by, by Robert? I do actually. The one over there called The Cruel Sea, okay. which is uh, between Bashi and Capital Wash. The river, Joe's River actually trickles between those two rocks. You see over there. Yeah. Okay, so that's your reason why, you, why, you, why that one is your favorite? Well, I spent a lot of my youth down there. Fishing and, uh, and catching great fish in that river. Um, you know, first romance is all about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're on display right now for probably for three months. Is there anything you want the Barbadian public to know about your collection? Or what you want to leave in the Barbadian public's mind as a result of your loaning us these works? Well, the fact that he was such a brilliant artist and, and um, how he captured. The, the ocean that surrounds the island uh, was very impressive to me. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of people know about his work, and I think we should educate them more. It's a pity um, that we don't have, well, today's not the official uh, launch, but I think we should try and encourage the younger Barbadians to come and see his work, especially the, the artists. Thank you, John.
really appreciate it, and we are You're really welcome. grateful that you were able to loan us those works. Thank you. Thank you. To Mervyn and Jeremy Awan, Sir Trevor and Lady Carmichael, John and Rain Chandler, Miss Jillian Clark, Anthony and Gloria Eduardo, Tom and Kathleen Lockfield, Mr. Bruce Goddard, Mr. Philip Goddard, Mr. Robert Goddard, Miss Dr. Lennox Honeychurch, Mr. Simon Kreindler, Dr. Allison Thompson, Allison Callender, Mr. Ernest Mercat Wilshire, Angela Boyce, William Cummings, and some um, other Barbados Museum and Historical Society staff, including Myrna and Chaplin. We all thank you tremendously for your contributions to this exhibition and for your ability to take it from conceptualization to actualization.